Roxo Media House. Jeff Wilson started covering the Texas Rangers in 2008, though he'll never forget 2021. Out on his own, he decided it was time to do a podcast, but his wheels were spinning until a nerd came along. There's no going back now. Welcome to the Texas Rangers Baseball Podcast. Here's your host, Jeff Wilson, and the recliner nerd himself, John Moore. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. This is episode number 63. This one is huge because not only is Mike Maddox going to join us here in studio in just a second, but new Texas Rangers ace pitcher Jacob DeGrom is going to be joining us via Zoom after we go to the press. This is Thursday, the press conference introductory. Yeah. How'd you pull this off? I just asked. <laughs> I mean, I didn't ask Jacob. The Rangers, the Rangers are very good, been they, very accommodating. You know, um, I think kind of we when we left the regular season, uh, I left it with the Rangers that you know it would be great if we could get you know the big signings if 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 we could work that out to get them on the show and you know the big signing first one was Bruce Bochy and they were able to to swing that for us. They which got is us great. that, and then um, today. Um, I don't know how long we'll have him, but he's yeah, going to be busy. Yeah, it's going to be short, but um, it'll be good to, to get to know him a little bit. And, yep. Um, it is Thursday, guy. That he's, he's being introduced later today. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, we'll piece it all together. Joel here's a genius, and uh, it'll look good. Hey, before we get going on the big league stuff and talking about the big news that happened, hit that subscribe button below. Listen. Big things have been happening in the winter. We've been covering every bit of it. Jeff just got back from the winter meetings. I did. Hit that subscribe button. Five ninety nine a month for Rangers today. For you Tarrant County people, this is the only Ranger coverage out here. Yeah. Uh, sixty dollars for the year, thirty five dollars for six months, which will take us a month into the to the season if you do that. But we got to talk about the big thing. Did the Rangers have they done anything this off season? <laughs> you know they're <clears throat> they're having a pretty good one. Um, obviously, and you were totally uh, wrong. I was, yeah, yeah. That was pretty embarrassing. I don't know. It was embarrassing. That's not just, embarrassing. I think we all thought, okay, look, I, I did not see this. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. I, the the last, you know, I I talked, you know, I talked to people, and there were people who were concerned about Jacob Grand's health, uh, and 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 the risk factor. You know, it's and it's, but it's you know, always there's risk with signing every player. But, sure. But this is this is a, a guy you're giving thirty seven million dollars a year. Uh, two and he's made 38 starts the last three years so you 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 just kind of look at it and it's like man that's that's a lot of risk but uh, obviously they they ran him through the physical they felt good about uh, what what they saw they're they're very confident with with Keith Meister who's the team physician who's who's become one of the better orthopedists um, renowned orthopedists in uh, in baseball so um, he had to sign off on this right exactly and and so um they got their man, you know, and and so so you look at the off season. You, you have uh, you have Bruce Bochy, Bruce Bochy on November 9th. Um uh, and then you you have uh, yeah. Jacob Bibgram here, right? And then you have Andrew Haney, who's behind us, who who's agreed to a, a deal. He hasn't signed it yet because he has to pass his physical, but that's not going to be a problem. Uh, and then you know, also the, the Rangers, the draft lottery. They they <laughs> yeah, they got fourth. They ended up improving by three spots. So. Uh, it, Had it, they gone regular, was it seventh? They thought they would yeah, do it. They were, the, they were the seventh worst. They ended up with the fourth pick. Yeah. So I mean, there's you know, and I don't know any of the the draft guys. I mean, we, we know a lot of names, but I don't know nobody. We'll know before. I I, I kind of get into all of that when you yeah, start getting but, there. I really. But start. anyway, so it's been it's just been a tremendous off season, and you know, you look, it, you know, on paper, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. but uh, <clears throat> if Degrom makes twenty five starts a season. It's 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 going to be really good because they're going to be twenty five great starts. Right. Of course, you know he's made thirty two uh, during his Cy Young years. Well, it's, before the last <clears throat> couple of years, he really was. He did pretty well. He was he was making twenty five to thirty starts before sure, the last couple sure, of years. Sure. You know, and and really, he was healthy during the COVID year because right. he made his full allotment of starts there. But it was only sixty eight innings or sixty two innings, something like that. Right. So you know, you you just you do kind of wonder. Andrew Haney hasn't had. A ton of innings the last two years. Jacob Odorizzi, same thing. Well, they might not push them all <laughs> and, the way to 200 innings yeah. this year, too. But yeah, so but the the question then is, do they have enough innings? You right. know, and, and and are they done? Are they done shopping? You know, it, it, the, the winter meetings. You know, you you uh, the way it works, you sit around and basically don't do anything all day. You know, other than chase rumors and and talk to people and uh, and then. In the afternoon, you, you or e- early evening, you get to talk to the general manager up in the suite, and um, 
the, on, t- on Tuesday, you know, Chris Young was asked, uh, I think Levi asked, um, are you guys done at the top end? And, and he said, well, I'd rather not comment on that. So it, he kind of left open the possibility that, that, that maybe they are. And, you know, Rodon, Rodon is still out there. And they have had a, they've had a big, Sanga? Cr- big crush on Rodon. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't, you know. That market's squeezing in, too. I mean, I, the Yankees I really, supposedly you know, are supposed to be in I've, on I've been told that, uh, you know, the Rangers were telling people in late in the season that Rodon was going to be their number one, their number one target. So, <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But um, the fact is, they got one. They got one of the big arms, and and they said they were going to spend money. Uh, they painted. They kind of put themselves in a corner, you know, you know, kind of like the Giants have. Uh, right. you know, it hasn't worked out for the Giants, for instance. You know, trying to get Aaron Judge, trying to get uh, Xander Bogarts. Right. Um, they've been yeah, he up- just signed today. <laughs> by the way, he's yeah. he's he's going out to God, San Diego. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, San Diego. I don't know, San Diego tried to sign Judge. They tried to sign Trey Turner. Right. Um, I don't know where San Diego gets all the money. Though Scott Boris made a pretty interesting point about San Diego. Um, San Diego, the, the question was like a small market team. And, and he said, it's not a small market because they're the only show in town. They're the only professional team. So yeah, they, there's no it, basketball. It was pretty. It was pretty interesting perspective. I, you know, I don't know what you guys think about Scott Boris, but he's really interesting <laughs> to listen to. The guy is so smart. And, uh, did he hold his court there? Uh, he he did. Uh, unfortunately, I was uh, under the weather uh, Tuesday when he was doing it, so I uh, I did not uh, <clears throat> partake. But I got the transcript of it. Uh, you know, with all of his silly little puns and, and yeah. things that are pretty hilarious. But you can tell he spends a lot of time on well, it. But Rodon's his guy, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Sanga's with Wolf uh, that, that he's got, and supposedly the yeah, Rangers. Joel, Joel Wolf is. Like the the agent to the Japanese pitchers, except, well, except for Otani. But. Uh, except for Otani, but I mean the Rangers have talked to Sanga. Apparently, I think they've had him here. Have they had him here in Texas? <laughs> and and uh, you know, I <clears throat> I don't know. You know, if it, if it's a five year deal, I don't think they would do it. Um, just because, again, we've talked about this. How do you balance out the rotation? Uh, and and you know, the Haney deal is interesting because he can opt out after this season. Right. And maybe, you know, if, if his strikeout rate is still high over a longer period of time, he's going to, he's going to have probably more money on the table next off season. But let's say he does opt out. The Rangers would have only two pitchers under, under contract uh, after next season. It'd be to Grom and John Gray. Cause Perez can be a free, a free agent, agent Odorizzi and then <clears throat> him. So exactly. You know, it would you, be you, good for the Rangers if he does well enough that he gets to opt out. Yeah, but honestly, that that's a good year for the Rangers. But you're kind of weighing; it's all part of the puzzle. You know, it's right. not just a one year plan. It's it's all the way, all the way down the line. And so, at what point do you want your, you know, do you commit spots for right. the prospects? And so, uh, you know, that's still a big part of this. But uh, shoot, you know, um, if I think if they could, if they could get Rodon. The way they're spending money, eh, yeah. what's what's a what's a few more ten, thirty hundred million? Absolutely, it's not our money. Yeah. yeah, you know, write a check. Let's let's look at this. I got a lot of flack on this yesterday, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this so you guys understand where I came from. This is the off season the Rangers have had so far. October twenty first, Bruce Bochy was hired, new manager. November 9th, they traded for Jake Odorizzi. They got Jake Odorizzi. November twenty third, Mike Maddox is named the pitching coach. He's sure. going to be in here in a little bit. December 2nd, they sign big man Jacob DeGrom. Yep. And then December 6th, they sign Andrew Haney. I said, so far, this is what they've done, and I give it a B plus. Everybody threw a fit. Why in a day? Da, 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 da. And I said, okay, you have to imagine they don't make one more move this offseason. That's where I'm having to grade from. If they didn't make one more move this offseason, it's a B plus to me. They needed a bat. Yeah. They could probably use one more arm, maybe. They at least need one more bat. Or it's so easy it could be an A, but it's not quite. That's the only reason I said it was a B plus because it's not done. It's as of today. I have to act like they're not going to do any more moves. Well, all right. So then they go forward from there. But this has been a great offseason. Yeah. This yeah. team has done, I don't think a lot of us thought it had grown. I think we all thought Rodon. Is sure. what we were thinking. Sure. <clears throat> Younger guy, longer years. He's going to take, he's going to have to get six years at least. Well, you'd think. Um, and then I think, you know, now, I think the Giants could, they've met with him apparently, and that could, you know, since they've heard the Yankees are in on missed out on who they wanted, they could potentially do that. But, um, you know, you, with where things are, they aren't done. They need to, they need to sign a, a 
hit, a hit, <coughs> a batter, a left fielder, and uh, some some bullpen help. Um, <coughs> yep, My, Matt Moore. I'm assuming they're going to get Matt Moore back in here. He's testing the market with what he did last year. He's got to be attractive to somebody. You'd think so. So I, I, I wonder if Matt's <coughs> not playing the field and just he seems like a guy that really liked it here, and maybe he's just telling the Rangers okay. what he's getting. And they're they're kind of waiting to see what market is for him before they commit. Yeah, the the, the thing that he said at one point <clears throat> last year was that he's <clears throat> he's done starting. You know, he he came up as the uh, you know the young ace, the hot the hot shit starter, and yeah. and you know he 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 was in that same class with with, with Mike Trout. You know, of a right. great prospects, and he had such a good start to his career with. Including you know shoving it up the Rangers' butts in the game one of the ALDS in 2011, right? Uh, and and then uh, you know injuries and whatever it just didn't work out. But he th- he thinks he's found a niche here and 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 being a reliever and uh, certainly seems like it. Good lord, he was really good. He yeah. was really really good. Him and, and Burke were just two of two shut down lefties is yeah, what they were. Yeah, and they uh, you know they they the, the Rangers helped him with his his breaking ball, make it better. Um, and and you know it's it's good against righties and lefty hitters. So. Uh, uh, I've kind of forgotten about Matt Moore, but it would be great for him to come back. I and mean, he's just a nice guy. Um, we need to talk about bats. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. You're still yeah. on. I like Gallo. Uh, I do too. I've I've been on Gallo. He's going to be cheap, I think. Yeah, I think uh, you know Boris said one year deal. Right. Um, you know he said that about to Cody Bellinger, and Cody Bellinger got seventeen five. But I don't. Gallo's not going to get seventeen five. No, I mean. A big reason for Bellinger getting that kind of money is because he's a Gold Glove center fielder, right? Um, I think you know, and Gallo's well, obviously a Gold Glove right fielder or left fielder, but um, he's got he's got some work to do. So I, I think I think the Rangers could probably get him for one and let's say between eight and ten plus mm-hmm. some plus it, some incentives. Incentives, right? Um, I think that just makes a lot of sense. It's it's good defense. He's he's comfortable here, right? What well, you know, whether you think he's had good seasons or not, his best seasons have been here and. Um, so anyway, that's, that's kind of what I think. I, I, and then there are people in the organization who like Joey and, and would like, like to see a reunion. They really would. He'd and love to come back. He never wanted to leave. Right. So, you know, that's, that's, he would, he would jump the at shift, the chance. The shift is gone. I know they yeah. can move that yeah. outfielder over yeah. there, but they can't leave the infield now. They have to stay on the infield yeah. and on that side. Uh, the way the uh, look the ball there's a lot of hits that came that that he lost sure going straight at people sure I mean p- people throwing him out at first base from short right field yeah I mean let's be honest yeah I mean he, look he he does strike out a lot he misses <laughs> balls in the zone you and I talked about that before but you can't take away the fact he he'll hit thirty bombs probably at least and he plays good defense yeah he you know he walk, he, walks. he walks you know I just think that getting him back in his comfort zone. Like I said, I think he's a good match with Donnie Ecker and, and Tim Hires, uh, just kind of the way they teach hitting. Uh, so, who but else? We'll, but we'll see. Um, Conforto, you know, Conforto's out there, but um, probably trade. I guess you know it'd be a multi-year deal. Um, right. And I don't, I don't know if the Rangers want a multi-year deal, honestly, uh, um, or, or a longer-term deal, maybe two years. But you know, because I, I think that uh, you know there are guys who are closing in Dustin Harrison and Aaron Zavala. Uh, in the farm system and you know they still have Bubba Thompson and I know I know I wrote about this a little bit today at rangersday.com 5.99 a month or $60 for a year um you know Bubba can get Bubba's speed is such a game changer and and with the rules changes you know the bases are bigger when it, well there's that's shortening the distance between first and second and also yeah that was good what you wrote pitchers can only pick off two times so he changes uh, the game so I mean, you know, if if they <clears throat> if they pick off twice and they don't have a good slide step, have the Rangers ever had a base. guy that's that much of a threat on base stealing? I know uh, uh, Tom Goodwin, maybe I'm I'm not sure. Uh, but he never was like this. I mean, Bubba, you, it's very rare that we even thought Bubba had a chance to get thrown out. He knew when to jump. He knows how to read a pitcher. He got caught once <sighs> last year. I, I don't think. think he got. I don't think he got thrown out. It was he he would slide over the base. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> that, that's kind of his problem. But anyway. Uh, you know, I I don't think that they're quite there yet on making Bubba a full time player just because they the aren't sure be just because they aren't sure he can get on base consistently. But what well, <clears throat> what about a Bubba Joey Gallo platoon? I I don't know. I, I just think that I just am kind of hung up on Joey Gallo right now. But yeah, uh, and then and then well, Bubba Bubba is a is a 
a weapon. He Even be. if he doesn't start every day. Yeah. He is a weapon at late in the game. You, you pinch run for him in the eighth, you're down by one. Yeah. And the guy in the eighth inning gets on base, um, like someone like Lowe or something like that, it's real easy to put Bubba in there yeah. and make things happen if yeah. you need to sure. get a run. So. And then, and then I, I, I still think they need bullpen. Obviously, sure. everybody thinks they need bullpen help, and they do. Um, <clears throat> but it'll be interesting to see how they go about it. You know, bringing back Matt Moore would be – would make a lot of sense. Kimbrel, maybe. Um, I wouldn't do that. You know, I I think that you know if you if you're going to sign a closer, get a, sh- you know, if you want to commit that kind of money, get a sh- more sure th- more sure thing. He's still out there. Yeah, I, I don't know, but um, you know, <clears throat> I saw something where Liam Hendricks, Might the White traded, Sox, is, yeah. is potential trade bait, but I think he's making eighteen a year. He's making a big a big uh, big salary. Um, We're not cutting checks, but again, yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> but you know, and and. And I've said this before, and I, I asked Chris Young about it. I mean, he played on teams with excellent closers. I mean, right. Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman and then Greg Holland, who was so good for the, the Royals there. Um, but it's more about that that Royals, really the Royals bullpen in, in 14 and 15 kind of changed the the way that teams use their bullpens in the playoffs. Right. And, and, you know, they would they'd get five innings out of their starter and they would turn it over to all those hard throwing guys that they had and, and, and the games. And that's just kind of the way it, it's become. So, um, anyway, they do have work to do. That's, that's, I think the best way we can leave it. Yep. I think it's time for Mike Maddox. Let's get him in. Let's get Mike Maddox in here. Guys, we'll be right after this. Joining us now is new and once again pitching coach for the Texas Rangers. Mike Maddox is joining us. Mike, hey man, thanks for coming in here. Hey, thanks for having me, man. It's good to be here. We Sorry. love Fort Worth. Sorry about the traffic. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's something we live with. You know, when we opt to live here, we know that uh, other people like to live in here too. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll ask my real dumb media question first, just to get okay. it out of the All way. Right. Um, is your rotation better with Jacob Degrom or without Jacob Degrom? <laughs> hmm. It is kind of a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get you a true number one in any any type of pitching rotation. You're doing you're in a good spot. No, Jacob gives us that man. He's a true number one. Yeah, what? Well, I mean, you were in the National League for well ever since you left the Rangers. Yeah, so you saw a lot of them. A lot, lot of number ones or a lot of pitching? A lot of Jacob Degrom. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, why is he so good? Well, number one, he executes his uh, his fastball. He pitches with his fastball. He's got quite a fastball. I yeah. mean, things got hop, it's got velo, and he puts it in a good spot pretty much. A little slider behind it, you know. You throw 100 miles an hour, you, those upper, you know, plus fastballs. Guys, guys got to cheat. You got to get that bat going. Next thing you know, you throw something that starts in the same spot. They pull the trigger pretty regular. That's why strikeouts are so high, walks are low, because everybody's on a hair trigger to catch up to 100. So, the the thing the thing with him that that worries a lot of people is his health. Uh, he has he's thrown, I mean, he hasn't hit top to hundred innings since since two thousand nineteen. Do you have to manage that, or is he just a different breed? You know, it's something we got to learn with him. Yeah. You know, the medical team's got to learn him. The performance guys got to learn him. I got to learn him. Boach got to learn him. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, the more we're around one another and the more we keep the uh, that conversation back and forth, you know, stay, uh, you know, heavy communication, how you feeling, how you doing, and monitor what we do in spring training um, as far as residual throwing. You know, you throw yesterday, we got a team fundamental today, and we're, we're <coughs> throwing the bases. Well, you know, if you threw yesterday, chances are you just kind of watch. Yeah. You know, try to be smart with it. And, you know, we'll do that with everybody, not just Jacob, but everybody. Right. So it's kind of how he handles the workload. He Talked to him the other day. He finished the season strong, said he felt great, and that that's good news. And one reason we got him. The uh, the rest of the rotation. Hey, I, I guess do you always follow your guys? Like Martin Perez was your guy. Yeah. I mean, you're you know he made his debut with the Rangers. You were his first pitching coach. Have you monitored what he's done over the years? And then what did you think of his season last year? 
you know, I always keep my eye out for guys that I know, guys that I love, and guys that I've had. And Martine was, uh, I remember the first, it was January of 09, first time I saw him throw. <laughs> and we had this mini camp in January, and he hops on the bump at the old ballpark in Arlington and starts throwing. And I just said, man, I could watch this guy throw all day. He's that smooth, kind of velvety re- um, delivery, smooth release, arm works well. Now tell me about this kid. Oh, he's 19. I go, 19? <laughs> Damn. I mean, he's pretty darn consistent for a 19-year-old. With that came the immaturity of a 19-year-old, or should I say the lack of experience. Mm -hmm. And now when I just have watched him grow through the years, he's become more and more confident that he is a major league pitcher. And what he did last year, everything kind of came together and a little chip on his shoulder from what happened in his time in Boston where he was taken out of the rotation. So I think he used... 2022 is a no this i'm the real deal and he got back where he was comfortable in texas yeah and and pitched great man 196 innings or something crazy yeah, yeah. 196 and yeah. a third <clears throat> and the crazy thing is i think that was like fifth in the league mm-hmm. and i think that's something that chris young and bruce bochy want to change where rangers pitchers maybe go an extra inning maybe i don't want to say you push them but it seems like that is a something that's that's going away from the game that that Chris and you and Bruce believe in mm-hmm. getting guys into the 6th oh, yeah. and 7th inning. You got to set the bar high, man. You know, uh if you want to get wins and I think wins are important. <laughs> people, some people say they don't matter. Nah. I, I nah. say, well, really. <clears throat> okay, so if we end the season um 60 and 102, well, I guess I didn't think wins mattered. Oh, no, nah, they matter. Yeah. They matter. And as a starting pitcher, wins matter. And sometimes uh you know, especially uh, at home, you go out there and you throw five innings. Well, the other team gets six at bats, you know, or you get, you know, they get six, they get five at bats to your four. If you throw six innings, they got six at bats to your five. Yeah. So if you want to get the win, sometimes it takes seven at bats for your team to get the win. So if I got to go an extra inning to get a win or two extra innings to get a win, a lot of times that that's where you get your wins is in the seventh and eighth inning. Yeah. So if you want to get the win, you better hang out, man, and. That whole quality start thing, six innings, three runs. Last time I checked it out, that was a four and a half ERA. Well, I think good games are thrown in the seventh inning, eighth inning, and ninth inning. And that's where we got to push them to. Do you, I, I guess I've asked you about this a little bit, but analytics are kind of dictating a lot of that. How you know? Oh, well, you can't go a third time through the order because this, this, and this happens. I I, I know what the numbers say, but is it? There's got to be a lot of gut there, as Wash would say. Trust the gut. You got to. Yeah. You look back at that third time through, and you mentioned analytically. I don't think that Bob Gibson or Sandy <laughs> Koufax or Nolan Ryan knew the word analytically. Yeah. Okay? And if you look back in the record books, it's nothing new. It has been going on for 100 years, 100-plus 100 years, that that third time through is – always been kind of a hump for the starting pitcher. Yeah. It's nothing new. It's just now it's like this big focus, you know. But, you know, back then people, you know, one, two, three in the first, and you face, you know, ten guys through three, and then, you you know, it might take you 15 times the second time through, and it might take you 15 times the third time through. But that's the way the game has always been. It's nothing new. It's just now people say, oh, we got to do something different. Well, you can. You can. But I think you uh, kind of wear your bullpen out. Yeah. And, um, you know, you're only as good as your bullpen. Yeah. Through the course of a season, you are only as good as your bullpen. But your bullpen is only as good as rotation. So they kind of one hand wipes the other, you know, so they got to work together. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the, I just, you know, I know that, uh, you know, there's now the, eight, the eighth man in the bullpen with the, the, the 26 man roster and the, you know, the limits on 13 pitchers. But, you still you'll still run through eight if you if you can't get deeper into games. And I yep. think teams run into that all the time. There's no doubt about it. You know we're going to start like every team now. It's like 13 pitchers, yeah. all right, with that extra man. And if you think you're going to start the season with those 13 and in the season with the same 13, yeah. man, you're in a really good spot if that happens. Right. You're in a really yeah. good spot. It's going to take you 20 guys, you yeah. know, to to get through a season. So you got to have depth in the organization. You got to have some starter depth because uh, if somebody needs to skip a start or somebody's got a, you know, twist an ankle or something like that, and they got to miss one, well, you know, with the 15-day disabled list back where or 
injured list. The injured IL. List, yeah. The That's IL, right. yeah. Yeah, the IL. <clears throat> Well, you got to have somebody who can fill the shoes for a start or two. Yeah. And I think that's where the depth comes into play. And, you know, you better count on having 20 guys that can help you win. Have you have you dived into the Rangers farm system, that, that depth? Have you looked deep in it? I am doing that as we speak. Um, I'm going in to the ballpark this week and try to look at a couple guys a day uh-huh. and get in depth and see, you know, just where I can get a, a plan for when I meet with them about this is what I saw. I want to sit down with you and let's go over this. But I'm doing, you know, a couple at a time. I've, I've brushed about six guys now. Okay. Okay. Anybody you like who stands out? Yeah. Well, six. Um, we got this one guy, Jacob DeGrom. I looked at him <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I kind of like him. Who? like him a lot. <laughs> I did see this uh, young fella, um, Brock. Brock Burke. Yeah. Brock Burke. Yeah. I kind of like what he's bringing to the table, you know, left-hander with a little bit of uh, got a hop and fastball and yeah. nice little come at you attitude. Yeah. He kind of jumped out at me. I met Taylor Hearn. He's big, big sum gun, yeah. cowboy at that. So yeah. right yeah. away, you know, my heart's all for Taylor Hearn. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I looked at him and chatted with him, talked about a couple things. So, you know, I'm going to do this with everybody. And mm-hmm. the, the longer, uh, you know, I'm right at the beginning of it right now. And with the weather being so good, you got to go play afternoon golf. Right? Sure. Right. Yeah. You yeah. can't miss that. So that yeah. kind of cuts into some of that scouting time. <laughs> <laughs> How often are you playing? Man, if it's 70 in the afternoon, I'm playing. So yeah, I'll play five, six days a week. Yeah, well, you, <clears throat> I mean, you're, you're a pretty busy guy. You've got stuff you got to do. Mm-hmm. So are you okay just going out and playing nine? Or, sure. Or, yeah. Yeah, but if you you know, just well play till dark if you're gonna go out. Yeah, you know, practice till dark or do something. You know, it gets dark early, five thirty. So if I'm at the ballpark until one, you know, I got to scamper out there and you know, it leaves me about three hours of daylight and get her done. All right. Um, Are you a scratch golfer? Man, used to be. Used to be. Yeah, used to be. It's kind of funny how used to be's don't count anymore, as Neil Diamond <laughs> said. You know, but. uh you used to hit the ball a lot longer. Now I get frustrated I don't hit it as long. It's still trying to use the same club and ended up coming up short in the water and make you double bogey, but I get it around the course okay. I don't think I don't think you make a lot of doubles. Try not to. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta keep those big numbers off the cart. You bet. Um but you get to do it at home now. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big thing. Um Sleeping in my own bed is big, you know, get to walk my dogs each day. And, you know, my daughters live here, one in Fort Worth, one in Dallas. I get to spend more time with them or see them or at least being able to see them. Yeah. You know, where when you're on the road for eight months out of the year, well, you know, that kind of took its toll over the last couple of years, especially, you know, um, kind of hit a certain age where you like being home and you like some normalcy. And I think that uh, this opportunity uh, r- really – Really fits me well. What I, I know that the you know as, as things go, Chris Young had to ask the Cardinals permission. Mm-hmm. How how quickly did it come together once that took place? Oh, in my mind, it didn't take long. <laughs> yeah, you know, in Cy's mind, uh, I don't know how long it took him. It didn't seem it took long, but we got protocols and things in this game, and it, you know, there's still teams out there right now that have coaching vacancies. So I think with this uh, moving the winter meetings up, moving the Rule 5 draft up, uh, moving up, free, just seemed like there's a lot of stuff happens right after the World Series. And yeah. Kind of condensed it where I think, uh, you know, since this game, players are first generally. You know, you take care of the players and you try to get in there and fill out your coaching staff. What, um, since, since, since you left the Rangers or you were, you worked with Max Scherzer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've worked with Adam Wainwright. Yeah, you've worked with some pretty pretty good guys. Who 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 are your favorite guys? Even even with the Rangers, if you want to do that, Fa- favorite guys you've worked with. Favorite guys I've worked with. Um, Kobe Lewis. Oh yeah. How about Kobe? <laughs> we had him in in studio. He in that, yeah. that very chair. Yeah. yeah, good man. He's a good man. I can't fit. In, I don't feel this chair like Kobe does. Holy man. crap! He's, Holy cow! That's a big yeah. boy. Could Kobe. He's one of my favorites. Um, actually, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, I went and 
spent the weekend with Ben Sheets. Oh yeah, he oh, had wow. I had him sure twenty years ago. Yeah, so he was always one of my favorites. Uh, David Bush, who's the pitching coach for the Boston Red Sox, he's one of my favorites. Um, you know, of course, my time in um, Washington. Um, you know, Max was just a beauty. Talked to Max the other night, and you know, we had a long conversation. So, mm-hmm. you know, Adam Wainwright, pros pro. You know, um, just so many, and it's it's unfair to the guys I don't mention right. because they all mean something. You know, it's easy to pick the guys that won the Cy Youngs and stuff like that because <laughs> everybody knows who you're talking about. Yeah. <clears throat> but if I were to mention some of the other guys that you just really got a hoot out of, you know, a, a Joe Nathan. You know, sure. I loved, I loved Joe's personality and our relationship together. And John Lester had him a short time. Right. What a peach. He was a guy from across the field. You, you despised him. You said, man, what a, what a. SOB that yeah, guy. Yeah, we didn't care for him. You know, you're like, man, quit your bitching and throw the ball. You know, quit bitching and start pitching. Let's go yeah. and throw it over the plate and we'll light your ass up. But we didn't. Yeah. yeah. And then here we get him uh, for a short time after the uh, trade deadline in 21. And here was a guy that just went out there on straight blood and guts and competed his tail off with not the stuff that he had at right. one point, but just the kind of guy just after you get to know him, He's just another Colby Lewis, you know, uh-huh. just a quiet guy who goes out there and grinds his tails off. Compare Scherzer and DeGrom. Since they were teammates last year. Well, it's unfair for me to try to pass judgment on Jacob because I, I, I don't, don't know quite what, know him. You know, I've yeah. been in Maxie's foxhole for a couple of years, got a couple Cy Youngs, and right. the big competition for the Cy Young was Jacob. Yeah. yeah. You know, he was putting up <clears throat> ballistic numbers, you know. Max was putting up good numbers. Jacob was – Right there with it, Maxie was getting wins where Jacob wasn't. Right. And that's where they were saying that wins don't matter. And we'll try telling that to Max or tell that to Jacob, wins don't matter. I yeah. disagree. I think everybody has to honor the wins because you're logging the innings to get them. Yeah. Right. Well, I think I think the first DeGrom Cy Young, he won like 12 games. Yeah. Which tells you, you know, what the, the <laughs> other stuff was. I but. thought it was very, very – uh I didn't like it this year that the kid in Atlanta, Kyle Wright, yeah, had 21 wins right. and like got no love. Yeah, sure. Got no love. Oh yeah. And I was like, "Well, what what's wrong with him?" And they go, "Oh, wins don't matter." I go, "They don't matter. They don't matter. He's the only guy that won 20 games. What do yeah. you mean they don't matter?" Sure. He's yeah. got to get some love for that. You think? You think? All right, John. The fun part? Yeah, we're done. Well, All right. We're going to get in. Now we're going to start talking about, so you're from Las Vegas, for those that don't know. Yeah. You grew up in Las Vegas. You went to Rancho High School. Did you play any other sports when you were growing up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we played them all. In yeah. high school, too? Uh, well, that's a whole other story. I mean, a little bit. A little bit in high school. Football, basketball? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. But, but we, were, we were a military kid growing up. All right? Okay. So we lived here, there, and everywhere. And in the growing years... I say the growing years, you know, uh, 11 to 15, we lived in Spain. And living in Spain was like living in a very, very small town, Texas. Right. We lived in the base community. And, you know, we had everybody wanted to play sports. So like in football, we had weight limits. Those 125 was the cutoff. Right. So you had up to 125 and then from 126 to 150. And then if you was over 150, you went and played, you know, like for the high school. By that time, you was probably <laughs> in high school if you weighed yeah. over 150. <clears throat> right. So, yeah, I played football. I, I weighed about 123 pounds. I <laughs> freaking loved it, man. It was great. And then <laughs> What would you play? Were you a quarterback? Were you, I mean, you were, oh, heck no. I didn't know the rules. <laughs> you just when tackled got, people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got tackled and stuff like that, but I enjoyed it. Then it was, you know, we played up to 150 pounds, and it was fun. Yeah. And then we moved to. Vegas. Yeah. There wasn't no weight limit. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I put on them pads, and some guy 200 pounds hit me. I quit. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I quit. I said, that, that's not fun. Yeah. That, ain't, that, hurt. that hurt. I'll let people try to hit, hit, hit my fastball yeah. is what I'll try to get them. Yeah, so, and we but, played basketball <clears throat> over in Spain. Played basketball. Right. Oh, yeah. 
I could ball it. Yeah, I was good. <laughs> and now, I when did you a, pick up golf? Was that after you became a, a pro baseball player? Is that yeah. when you picked it up? Or you yeah. didn't play that in high school or anything? No. Too many other sports. No. <laughs> we played basketball, and, I mean, you could get a run and start and, I mean, go and just hit that, that perfect little springboard in the gym and get up and touch that little hurly her curly thing that holds the net. You yeah. Know, I thought that was pretty cool, man. I had some hops. <laughs> and then when we went to Vegas, they were slam dunking. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I – yeah, I'm, I'm off of this. These guys are good, man. <laughs> These guys are good. Yeah, but you, you mentioned the military family. You're born in Ohio. Yeah. Greg was born in uh, San Angelo. San Angelo, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean TR, mm-hmm. another military guy. I'm sure you've talked about yep. it, but yeah, that's a that's a different It's a different upbringing. lifestyle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we lived in Riverside, mm-hmm. and Minot, North Dakota. Oh, my Taiwan. gosh. Taiwan. Okay. Yeah, everywhere. You ended up going to UTEP. Sure did. University of Texas, El Paso. Do you have any other schools? Do they even play baseball anymore there? No, they got Title IX out, I think, around 86 or 7. I was about to say, I don't I don't think they yeah, don't play remember. there anymore. Um, did you, Any other schools you considered? Would you have any other offers besides UTEP? I had some junior college offers. I got hurt my senior year. Oh, in, in high school? In high school. So I pitched <clears> about, I don't know, six, eight games maybe. Yeah. Yeah. UTEP was it, though, so you end up going there. Okay, now this is one of my fun things I love to ask somebody. You were drafted twice. Right. So you were drafted out of high school in the 36th round, 1979. Mm-hmm. 1982, the Phillies took you in the fifth round out of UTEP. Right. It's not like today. You know, they go to New York today and they do all of that stuff. How did you find out each time? How did you find out you've been drafted? The phone rang. That was it? Landline, too, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up on landlines. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm almost I'm closer to you than he is. Mm-hmm. He's a youngster here. Um, but so we're in your 1979, you're in high school. Were you at school? Where were you at? Were you, it was, I guess it was during the summer, in right? In 79, yeah. In June. <clears throat> right. Um, yeah, I was at home. At home. And did, did the Reds actually call you? Yes. You answered? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know who answered, but yeah, we were waiting on it, hoping it would ring. You yeah. knew it, well, you knew it was probably coming or you'd, you'd had some scouts out there. So Yes. Yeah. And so, what about in 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 the fifth round for the Phillies? Same thing. Were you were the house? Where were you at? Yes. Well, you were at UTEP. So at, no, I was at the house because once again it was in June. It was in June. So uh, you know our schedule was over. We weren't going to the World Series. So yeah. we were done playing in May. Right. So um, actually went home and hung out with uh, my folks and sat around and waited on the phone to ring and thank God it did. <laughs> where was the first place you played? Bend, Oregon. Bend, Ooh. Oregon. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you got in the car and drove up there, or what did you do? Did you have to report somewhere uh, first? I flew up uh, to Redmond, uh-huh. Redmond, Oregon, and uh, marveled at all the guys wearing red shirts. And I go, what's the what's this thing? And they go, oh, it's a community called the Rajneeshas or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, this is a big day for you. June 3rd, 1986. This is when you make your major league debut against okay. the Los Angeles Dodgers. This is another fun one. How would you find out you are going to the big leagues? Well, the AAA manager um, at that time, Bill Dancy, is his name, called me up and said, "Hey, man, um, were you out late last night? <laughs> I, Good chance." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was I out after curfew? Ah, we don't check curfew. I didn't think so. Otherwise, you wouldn't ask that question. And um, he said, "No, you're going to the big leagues." I said, "Great, great." So you know all the hard work you put in, and you know the things you pray for, things you hope for, and yeah, man, here it goes. This is this kind of cool, man. It's kind of cool. And you ended up how many years in the big leagues? Th- 13, 12? I had 16. 15 seasons. 15 seasons in the big leagues. Good Lord. I mean, look, I think if you pitch one day in the big leagues, you've outdone 95% of us who ever wanted to do anything. 99%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, that ever wanted to play the game. 15 years in the big leagues. That's awesome. You get into coaching. You have a little brother who comes up who mm-hmm. does okay. I got to ask a little bit. I'm a big brother. You're a big brother. Were y'all yeah. the only two? You have any sisters, brothers? I, I have a sister. You have, are you yeah. the oldest? She is. She is the yeah. oldest. Okay. Yeah. I'm you, better. I'm better than she is. She is. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you pick on Greg? What are y'all about five years apart? Yes, we are. Did you pick on him? You bet. You did. Did you ever do the fart on his head or anything? That's what I did. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Well, I mean, still in, do. In the, still do. <laughs> in the in the in the uh, in the Greg's Hall of Fame speech, he talked about how you you taught him how to light farts. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we tried to learn together. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it too. I'm I'm a big brother, and I tormented my little. You know what though, and this is true. When you're a big brother, I was ath- I played sports. I wasn't near the athlete to do anything. My brother was a better athlete mm. because we just picked the hell out of him, and he tried to keep up with me and my buddies. 
by the time he got up there, there was nothing. Man, we tore him up. We would knock him down and hit on him. And, you know, he tried to come throw ball. He was a better athlete than I was. I'm not saying Greg was better, but Greg had a great career, a Hall of Fame career. Mm -hmm. um, it, and did it without throwing 95 miles an hour. Yeah. That no, was he, pretty... he is a better athlete. I'm not a – no shame in that, man. Yeah. Better hey, baseball player. he played 15 player. years in the big leagues. Yeah. I know he did, too, and he had a Hall of Fame yeah. career. But, my God, it's usually the bro little brothers come up because big brother has a big hand in that because usually they just knock the shit out of him yeah. growing up. You know, there's a time where, you know, as a big brother, you know, little brother comes with you. Right. And you bring him. So, actually, you pull him. Right. You know, you pull him that he – to play with us, man – there's a big difference when you're 15 and 10. Yeah. Right. All right. Not right. so much when you're 25 and 20. Sure. Or 35 absolutely. 35 and 30. But when you're 15 and 10, what a gap. Yeah. And so he would come up and play with all of our, you know, all my friends. And then we'd go out to the ball field. We'd take our bats and our gloves and we're going to have a pickup game. And uh, I'd be the captain and my first pick would be little brother. Why are you taking him? I go, he's the best player <laughs> out here. <laughs> <laughs> better than any of them. He's 10 years old and he's better than we are. Are y'all still competitive? I mean, you get together for holidays and stuff. Do y'all still all get together and you oh, yeah. board games, golf? I know he plays golf. Yeah, we, we golf. And That's... try to kick each other's ass in golf and just, yeah. I imagine you guys jaw at each other like crazy. No, it's... we root for one another. We we tend to team up and take on other folks. Oh, my God. That's all not right, fair. Because he's a good golfer, too. Yeah, he? he is. Yeah. But you're better. <laughs> on a given day, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's talk about food. What's your favorite kind of food you love to eat? Oh, I know. Man, this one. I like Mexican. That's, and here yeah. in Texas, it's good. Oh, That's, my. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was a time in El Paso. Actually, Vegas, you know, we had a lot of uh, Hispanic restaurants or Mexican restaurants. But. Were they Tex-Mex like this good stuff um, here, or was it better here? It was a little more chain-oriented back then, you know? Right. Um, nowadays, I think uh, restauranteering has become a little more uh, target-oriented with a theme. Right. And um, I, love, I love the Tex-Mex. I really like the Sonoran Mexican food. Sure. And I like the Baja. Yeah. So it's all, hey, if it's got chips and salsa to start with, you're all right with me. It's, hot, though. It's got to yeah. be hot. That's it's got to awesome. be hot. Oh, got to be hot. Yes, yeah, this guy, this guy, I love a, spice, This guy too. wants the hot, hot. Now, yeah. do you do any sort of fast food? Are you a fast food guy? Not really. Not really? If you have to, is there one you know, Like the big debate is, oh, you grew up in Vegas. Did they have In-N-Out out, out oh, there yeah. compared to Whataburger? Well, we, we eventually got one. <clears throat> yeah, eventually got one. And that was uh, probably in the 90s. Yeah. And I do like some in and out. I do like What about that. Whataburger? Are you a Whataburger fan? I love Whataburger. But you can't, do you choose between one of them? Um, which one's closer? <laughs> <laughs> we got, I live up in uh, Keller and we got a, a Whataburger just down the street from me. But on the way home in Grapevine, we got the in and out. Yeah. So um, I would say this like in and out, probably eat it there. Right. If you're going to bring something home, I think Whataburger yeah. lasts a little longer. Well, I've, uh, I'm a diehard Texan, and so everybody thinks, well, you got to have Whataburger over in and out I say all the time, I said, look, I, I love Whataburger, but in and outs a good burger. Oh, yeah. It oh, is yeah. a good burger. I do enjoy it. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah, you're both either one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, favorite? Oh, Je Je Jeffrey likes them all. Yeah, yeah no I do. I do. Look at me. I'm the one that looks like I don't miss a meal. Well, no. no. <clears throat> one, th one thing he, about Mike. Jeffrey's half the man he used to be. <laughs> he, uh, he, he comes up with nicknames for all of his guys. Right. Like, uh, you know, and then he came up with nicknames for me because one time T.R. Sullivan and I were at uh, a bar in spring training and um, uh, uh, Toby Hall, was that the, the catcher? Yes. And Salt Lamaki were at the bar. And they were like, oh, well, they, they just said, well, we're going to pick up their tab. Was this booties or? <laughs> it was not booties. Okay. Uh, well, it turned out that T.R. and I had been there a while. Yeah. And then we had, uh, we had done some damage to the bar tab. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a it was a hundred dollars, which was a lot back then. Well, I mean, it was like 2010 or yeah. whatever. But anyway, uh, so he nicknamed me Cinquenta. 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I Hundo. Hundo. That's right. Hundo. hundo. It was right. Hundo. And then that next year, I stopped eating like a. a yeah, you pig. lost a lot of weight. I lost fifty pounds, and so then he called me Cinquenta. Mm -hmm. So. So Half those are my two used to be. That's right. Half the man. I'm working there. I'm starting. I've got to. I'll tell you what. Okay. Um, favorite home cooked meal. Who cooks it? Mom, mm. wife, whatever. Ooh. What's your favorite? Wow. Man. It'd have to be a tie, right? Sure. I gotta be some kind of politically correct here. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd say back when I was a kid, how's that? That's okay. good. Mom. Mom. Well, what favorite, favorite home cooked meal? Probably fried chicken. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. 
made real good fried chicken. You can't get anything better than mm-hmm. good, good. My mother made some great yeah. homemade fried chicken. Better mm-hmm. than anything you buy at the store. And we have a, uh, from my father's side in the family, a recipe that gets handed down is a applesauce cake. Really? And Ooh, a- applesauce really? cake is, it's phenomenal. It, now, what about your wife? Does she make something you love? As oh, like yeah. She, what does oh, she yeah. make? Oh, yeah. Um, your favorite thing she makes? Favorite thing she makes? Um, I like her appetizers. Oh, she'll she, put together? She, she makes uh, this brie type dip or yeah. you know you cut it with you start off kind of scooping it and then you end up like cutting it you know after it yeah. cools off but little cranberry sauce and brie yeah. together man interesting yeah what about you does jennifer make something good you she's like? an unbelievable cook she she could run a restaurant she her she I've makes, never even asked you this in all this time she makes great uh grilled pizza i think that's her favorite that's my favorite thing that she cooks but she can whip up a steak Knock your damn socks off. Steaks, Every, my everything, she, like. everything she makes is delicious. Yeah. And like when we met, she was a horse shit cook and uh, didn't cook anything. Right. I was the cook in the family, and I'm pretty bad. And then she just, and like all she wants for Christmas is cooking stuff. And That's awesome. Wow. She's phenomenal. Well, Kathy, Kathy was never really a cook. Kathy can cook, but she's got to have the recipe. Yeah. Put a recipe in front of, not my wife. Put a recipe in front of her, she can do it. She can't do like my mother, who used to could take anything that was in the pantry and make a meal out of yeah, it. Yeah, Jenny can do that. My, my wife can't do that. It's but my wife, wife, you get a recipe in front of her, it'll look like it did on the picture and all of that because she's OCD. It's got to look like that. <laughs> all right, let's go to the last thing. Now, this will be a fun one. Some of your players had some fun ones on this. We're going to get you out of here after this. It's what's something that nobody knows about you. Let me give you one guy you talked about. You'll love this is Brock Burke. I don't know if you knew this about him or not. He's a sleepwalker. Really? Yes. And there was a whole story written about it. I was the one that discovered it when he was in double A. I asked about it and I asked him this question. He told me about it. Like, bloodied his shins, gets up in the middle of the night and doesn't remember. Talked to some of the guys he roomed with in uh, yeah. in, in the minor Crazy. leagues. It was hysterical. They said he warned them about it. He would get up in the middle of the night and start having fights with his pillow and then go in the corner and then yell something and then go, I got to pee. And he'd go take it and they'd wake up in the toilet paper. I mean, it was crazy stuff. <laughs> uh, lighter. Cannot stand peanut butter. Yeah. Hmm. That's just weird to me. But what is something nobody knows about Mike Maddox? Such an open book. Wow. <laughs> hmm. Apparently, it's pretty boring. That's okay. Um, I'm not big on heights. Oh. Me neither. Not big on heights. But I was, were you, were you, when you were younger, were you okay okay. better then? Or like I get grew into where I'm deathly afraid of heights. Now. Yeah. I didn't mind it. When as I was a kid, kid we climbed trees and, you know, yeah. get up on the roof of the house and all that stuff. But as I've gotten older, here's one. Miller Park. The guys wanted to go up into the, the roof of Miller Park. And if you look up there at them catwalks, you know, Miller Park's got that, uh, <clears throat> like, um, half shell. Right. Yeah. And and it's there's no stairs. It's just a, a metal catwalk. You right. Know, circular. So uh, the guy said, "Yeah, let's uh, let's go up there." I said, "Yeah, yeah, 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 let's do it." You know, so you know, we go up there, we take the steps, and you know, now we're like scaling, you know, just up this catwalk. And one of the guys go, "Man, look how high we are!" And I look, and I that? and I froze. <laughs> and we had only gone about, I don't know, ninety feet. Okay, you know, yeah. on the on the catwalk. So we're on the. Incline. I mean, we're you're still going. You're up. not even in the middle yet. You're not. No, not even close to it. But that 80 foot coming down was like the longest wall oh. I've ever had to take. Oh my gosh! It it makes me sick that way now. That way, you look at like even at the the new Globe Life Field has those catwalks up mm-hmm. there too, and you'll see some people get up there. Hey, you go up there. I'm like, there ain't no way you're getting me to walk across it's that a, thing. Mm-mm. It's not so high. Thing. I mean, you can't. <clears throat> the ball can't. You can't have the ball hit the roof. So those things are. Yeah, they're up there. It's too much. Well, I'll, I grew up in Colorado, so I guess you, you don't you, you're not afraid of heights. But <laughs> there are some there are some times you're driving some passes and you look over the edge. You're like, well, anything else you got for him before we let him go? No, just you know, he's got to go hit golf balls. Well, no, you're going to the stadium. Yeah, man. I gotta go. gotta go to work today. Yeah, I gotta go talk Dang to that it. new guy yeah. on the team. Yeah, the new guy. No, but we didn't talk about Haney. You got another one coming too. You're gonna, be, yeah. gonna have to meet with this one too. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, Glad, glad you're back with the organization. Absolutely. Yeah. It's good to 
had some good times with you on the road. More to come. Good time to you since. <clears throat> uh, who do you like college basketball so far this year? Have you watched much? You know what? I was watching uh, the Horns play the other day. Yeah. Longhorns. They look pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I was watching, uh, of course, you know, we get, we've seen a lot of Michigan State already this year. Right. And Tom Izzo doing his thing. Front loads, he's, he's scheduled, so it shows the guys that they're vulnerable and have to get better. Yeah. Right. And so that makes them always scary come March. But, you know, I kind of bet on the coaches right now because I have not seen a whole lot. I did watch Illinois um, make a nice little comeback the other day against uh, Texas, nonetheless. But yeah. they looked pretty good in that game. And that was, uh, you know, they went into OT. Mm -hmm. But I thought both those teams looked pretty good. Well, let's go catch the Frogs. Yeah, game. I look forward frogs, to seeing frog, the Frogs. Frogs are good. They yeah. really are. They've got, they're, they're, they can't stay healthy right now. But when they're, when they're healthy, they're deep. They got a yeah. good little team. My, well, Jamie my Dixon always seems to, push the right button here and there and yeah or should i say here all the time you know right. he's, he's been a got a great track record good coach winning coach so always got a root for the frogs and jamie yeah my my son-in-law his uh his cousin is drew timmy the one that plays for gonzaga the, mm. he, the big and gonzaga is yeah, always pretty good so i I've, I've watched some of them just because <laughs> he's from richardson where, where we all live a uh, pretty good kid, but he's on like his ninth year of eligibility. Yeah, he, he found out his NIL deal was yeah. so big. He was like, he he wasn't going to be a first round pick. He's probably going to end up in Europe. I think is what I they know. think. But he's like, I make more money coming back and hanging around Gonzaga, which is, I believe, that's in Washington. Yeah, Spokane, up yeah. in Spokane or something. Man, you talk about a guy who's built a program. Yeah, I want my kid. You know, I'm going to go to Gonzaga and build a dynasty. Yeah, right. Really, sure. What are you smoking? <laughs> He's done it. Yeah. He yeah. has. They've been great. There's, there's, there was talk that uh, Gonzaga might join the Big Twelve basketball only. That's mm. that's been a rumor that's been out there a couple times. So, Big Twelve's got good basketball. Well, in the next year, Houston, Cincinnati come yep. in. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. Good. I mean, it's already a good conference. Mm -hmm. All right, is that it? That's it. That's it, guys. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for coming in here with yeah. us. Uh, we got a big guest coming up here next, and then after that, we're gonna go down in the bus leagues. All right, sounds good to me. All right, guys, we'll be back in a minute. And joining us right now from Globe Live Field, it's new Texas Rangers ace, right-handed pitcher, Jacob DeGrom. Jacob, thanks so much for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. So what is it? what have the last, I don't know, six days been like for you? Maybe maybe even longer, maybe the last seven. Um, you know, it's, it's been kind of a whirlwind, you know, um, just figuring out everything, you know, deciding to, to you know, come to Texas and, and be a part of the Rangers, um, you know, it was very exciting, and then traveling here, um, you know, doing this announcement. It's been, it's been kind of a whirlwind, but you know, we are super, super excited to be here, and you know, me and my family are looking forward to the next five plus years here. Are you, are you, are you going to plant roots here? And I know you live in Florida. Are you, are you looking to to be a, a full time resident here, or how do, how do you guys plan on doing that? Yeah, we'll probably still end up spending the off seasons in Florida. Um, you know. Uh, with two kids, they love seeing their grandparents and, you know, my, my family and as well as my wife's family. So we're close to, close to everybody there. So um, yeah. we'll probably continue to, to live in Florida, but, you know, looking for a place to, to live here um, throughout the year. Okay. Um, so you, you, you just had your press conference. So hopefully these memories are, are, are these <clears throat> thoughts are, are close to your head. What, what was it? What was it that sold you on the Texas Rangers? Yeah, you know, I, like I said, I think it's it's yeah, whenever you hear that teams are calling, you know, t Texas was one that I heard that we were going to have a Zoom call with and and go through the meeting process with, and you know, I was excited, and you're excited to see what what teams have to say, and you know, talking to CY and Boach was on the call, um, just hearing those guys' vision, um, you know, Boach has won three World Series, so uh, he knows what it takes to get there, and, and the vision of this team and where the, where we want to be. Um, lined up with you know what I want to do um, I want to win baseball games and ultimately win a world series and that that's where 
you know, the, the goal is and, and to do that for a number of years, you know, that was the vision of, of what, 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 what they're trying to do here. And I felt like um, that lined up with what me and my family um, wanted to do and, and ultimately made the decision to, to sign with the Texas Rangers and, and, and thrilled about it. Uh, I, unfortunately I've had a pretty close, close view in John too, of the last two seasons and they, they <laughs> haven't, they haven't been great on the field. Uh, but you can see, you can see the progress without a doubt. So as you did your research, you see the progress I'm assuming. Otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't be here. Yeah, definitely. You know, you see the, the signings of, of, uh, Corey and, and Marcus and those guys are, are, you know, some of the best players in baseball. And then, um, you know, the, continuing to add throughout this off season and, and, you know, saying that they wanted me, you know, the, the Texas Rangers came after me and, and really wanted me here. And, um, you know, I felt like this was a place that I can help and you want to go out there every fifth day and, and, and put us in a position to win a baseball game, you know, um, and any, and anything can happen in this sport. So, um, you know, we're excited, you know, all this is exciting, but you know, the real excitement is when we step between those lines and, and leave it all out on the field. Um, yeah, we, we, you talked about this also, uh, you, you've had, uh, a couple rough years on the injury front the, this year, uh, which, you know, the, the stress frac stress reaction, which you, you said was kind of a freak injury. Uh, but I do think a lot of, a lot of people are wondering how, how, are, how is Jacob DeGrom feeling? Yeah. You know, I feel really good. Finished the, the season really strong. Um, you know, felt healthy, felt like I could have kept going. So, um, you know, with that being said, you go into the off season and, and the goal, you, you prepare to make 30, 30 plus starts and, you know, you hope it ends up being quite a bit more than that. And you're pitching deep into playoffs and, you know, that's the goal for me. Um, go out there, like I said, every fifth day, take the ball and, you know, put us in a position, uh, position to win. Um, you know, that's the ultimate goal and the ultimate goal is winning a world series. So anything that I can do to help with that, you know, that's, that's what I want to do. I thought, I thought it was pretty interesting that when we talked afterwards, um, that you you knew Keith Meister from the 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 scapula injury that you had this year and and you know the he's kind of like that's kind of like his specialty is the sub subscapulus and the the scapula stuff so what what did I guess it's a nice comfort level knowing that you're coming to a, a team with a doc who you know and who knows you yeah that's a nice comfort level and you know that was that was just you know obviously that was frustrating last year um, I, like I said I felt really good you know, last spring and it was just a weird, weird bone injury. Um, and talking to Meister about that and him saying, Hey, you just got to wait for this to heal. Everything looks fine. You just got to wait for this to heal. And once it did, you know, I was able to build back up and, and go out and pitch. And like I said, finish the year healthy. So, um, you know, preparing this off season to go out there and make 30 plus starts. Uh, we had, uh, we had Mike Maddox in studio earlier, uh, in the, in the show and, and, you also touched on this, but uh, uh, this, uh, this guy's one of the, the, the best pitching coaches in baseball. What what can can a veteran and a Cy Young winner like you take from 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 Mike Maddox? You know, I, I've had a, a, a lot of people who've impacted me a lot in my career, and, and a lot of them have been different pitching coaches. So, um, you know, you take bits and pieces and find out things that work for you. You know, he may view something a little different, and you try it, and oh man, that works. So. Um, anybody who's been around the game that long obviously knows a lot about it. So to be able to to learn and and constantly try to figure out a way to get guys out, um, you know, it, it's it's a plus. So looking forward to my opportunity with uh, you know working with Mike and and seeing what he has to offer. You know, you're you're always trying to get better and always trying to learn new things in this game. And and I think he's going to be great at helping me with that. So uh, you, you had your family there today. Uh, how old are your kids? Uh, I got two kids, Jackson's six and Aniston's four. So, um, you know, they're excited to be here. That's what I was going to guess. Is, is, is Jackson, is he, is he playing T-ball or is he, has he gotten into it yet? Yeah, he played a, a, well, he didn't, he was a little too old to play T-ball. He missed the cutoff by like nine days. So he had to play <laughs> against them eight years, eight year olds, but he did great. Um, you know, he's starting to really like baseball. So, uh, bringing him into the clubhouse and, and getting him out on the field and enjoying that time with him here, you know, definitely looking forward to making those kind of memories as well. 
What, what, what do you think about eight-year-old baseball? I mean, it's rough. I mean, my son, my son's ten, but I mean, it's fun. It's fun, but hey, I got more nervous than you know, I mean when I pitch for him. I'm like, all right, I, you know, I hope he has a good game, and then sitting there pacing back and forth. My wife's like, hey, calm down, would you? And I, she's like, now you know how we feel when you pitch. I said, oh, well, <laughs> that's good stuff. All right, real quick, I'm going to turn over to John and then maybe ask you some non-baseball stuff. Yeah, we usually do this, and you'll learn this more as we see you around the clubhouse and all of that. Mine, mine's more fun stuff. Only going to keep you for a couple of days because I know you got 10 minutes to get out of here, and I appreciate it. First of all, you're from uh, Omen Beach, Florida, Calvary Christian Academy. That's where you went to high school. Uh, did you play any other sports when you were in high school? I played basketball, and I golfed some. You golfed? Hey, what's your golf game? Are you scratch? Like no. a lot of pitchers? Um. I went to, I, let's see, I, when I was younger, I switched to right-handed, then I switched back to left-handed, so <laughs> ah, I, golf game's not very good. Okay. <laughs> okay, now you go to Stetson University. Let me understand this right. You were a shortstop originally, right? Uh, freshman year, third base. Sophomore year, shortstop. Uh, junior year, shortstop and pitching. And pitching. So you were always pitching. Were you coming out of the bullpen? What? I mean, you're throwing 100 miles. Were you throwing that hard in high school? No, no, I didn't pitch much in high school i'd throw every once in a while but um in co- my first two years in college i didn't pitch at all and then uh i might have one inning i can't remember on a, in a blowout game they you know brought him in the throw uh, but um you know i my first two years in college i didn't pitch and then the plan was to play shortstop when i was a junior in close and uh then i got switched to a starting pitcher so so i mean stetson's where Corey kluber went um are how far apart were you guys um, I'm not sure. I think his, his last spring was my first fall. Okay. So I was what I was springs eight, nine, 10 there. So I think seven was his last year. I'm not sure though. Yeah. The, the Hatters were, yeah. were, were the producer of Cy Young winners. This, this is always one of my fun ones. I like to ask you were drafted in the ninth round by the Mets. Uh, of course, back then, uh, that was 19. When, when was that? It was 2010 when you were drafted. So you weren't in New York, your ninth round. How did you find out you'd been drafted? How did that go? Um, I was, I think I was at my grandma's and just got a call. Like, hey, <laughs> I, yeah, hey, you're, we're going to take you in the ninth round. And I said, okay, awesome. Do you remember where it, you huh? reported first? Uh, down to St. Lucie. St. Saint Lucie. All right, we're going to get out of here. Uh, one question we ask a lot of people that's a lot of fun. It, it's what's something that nobody knows about you. If you want to know a couple of fun ones, your general manager there. We always ask, what's something nobody knows about Jacob DeGrom? Um, uh, there, we've got some fun ones. Uh, Jack Leiter doesn't like peanut butter. Mike Maddox, what did he say today? Scared of heights. He's scared of heights. Anything, what's something that nobody knows about Jacob DeGrom? I'm not really sure. They can answer that right off the top of their head. That's gonna... <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'll have to think about that and get back with you on that. I'll, I'll see you out there. We'll see you at spring, yeah, we'll training, spring training out there. Well, well I'm going to hit you back up on that one. Hey, okay. Jacob, welcome to Texas. We're so excited to have you here. I come at this from kind of the, the Ranger fan time. Look, this is the first time a true ace like this. I mean, we had Nolan Ryan. He was great, but not with your resume coming in here. It's super exciting. Welcome to Texas. Thank you very much. All right, guys. All right, Jacob. Jacob DeGrom, Texas Rangers. Happy holidays. Happy and, holidays, uh, yeah, we'll and we'll around. see you around spring. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. We're going down in the bus leagues right after this, guys. We got a big thanks for Mike Maddox for coming in here. Also, a big thanks to Jacob for Degrom for taking his time to come in here for a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty special. It is time to go down in the bus leagues. Yeah, yeah. We need to talk about a couple of guys real quick. Rule five draft was yesterday. We lost uh, Mason Engler, and that that stinks, but it's good for him. Yeah, and and I mean he's <clears throat> he's got to make the team. He's a loss temporarily. You know the rule the rule five draft. Um, <laughs> You take the player, add him to the forty man roster. He's got to stay, in stay the on the active roster the whole season. So um, you he'll know, be watching him this spring. See De- how he does. Detroit uh, uh, selected him. You know they're they've probably got some room to develop pitchers and take some time. But you know Mason uh, <clears throat> made three starts above high A. High A, right? So you know there there's some challenges there. It's not like he has overwhelming 
power stuff, but he he know you know he has two different fastballs. He knows how to pitch. He's a mature kid. Uh, mentally, he's probably ready for it. But you know, again, he's got to stay on the team the whole time. And there 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 could be a time when you just can't you just can't afford it. You, you can't know, afford if, it. If but he he's got clear waivers, then yeah, at that point he's designated for assignment. Every team has a chance to <clears> sign him. If they don't then the Tigers would offer him back to the Rangers. And if they can't make a trade or something, they'll get him back. For $50,000. $50,000. $50, yeah. so, and I think they'd love to have him back. Sure, but, yeah. I mean, yeah. he was their fourth-round pick in 2018, sure. had the Tommy John surgery. Um, we'll be watching those numbers. Yeah, and he's spring. from Forney. You know, he's uh, been a guest on our show, so a uh, good kid and uh, super nice, but good for him. I mean, this is a big league opportunity. Absolutely. He earned it. Let me tell you what. You yeah. know what? You put yourself in the position that the Rangers – labored over whether or not to put him on the 40-man roster. They didn't. They feared that they might lose him. They yeah. did. That's because you did what you were supposed to do this year. Yeah. And you made another team take notice. Dustin Harris. Dustin Harris. Yeah, the Rangers have been having um, – he, he was protected from the Rule 5 draft, by the way. But the Rangers have uh, had a couple hitting clinics in Arizona. Uh, they had the, the more veteran hitters like Harris who uh, you know missed the last part of the season with a, a wrist injury. Right. So um, – He's back and swinging the bat, but it was just a group of eight uh, of the more advanced minor league hitters, um, and and now some of the younger guys are in Arizona right now. So uh, they're going to have a pitching clinic a little later on. At least that's in the works. So um, you know, I can imagine a no, few names that might be there. Yeah, yeah. There's no rest <laughs> rest for the the weary, and it's just kind of get them on the same page and get them a, a good start to the, the the spring. And they'll you know they'll there will probably be a group of guys who. Um, obviously Harris is going to be in camp. He's on the 40 man roster, but like Justin Foskey, you know, some guys who will get, uh, probably invites, non-roster invites right. uh, and, and, um, be in big league camp. So just, you know, you want them to hit the ground running and everything and, um, give themselves a chance to make the team. And if not, then obviously they can, uh, springboard into the minor league portion of the camp and, and, and start the year strong. So, um, you know, they, they started these last year. Uh, of course, last year was so screwy with the the lockout, but still, it didn't right. affect the minor leaguers. But right. um, anyway, it's uh, so there's some stuff happening. Uh, I think I think on the on the Rule Five front, you know, it's unfortunate that that Englert was lost, but they kept. He was the only one they lost. You know, baseball. America, I was afraid of Kyle Cody. So baseball thought- America had listed five uh, five guys who um, five Rangers guys, four pitchers, including Cody. Um, who might get selected. So, Bradford Bradford was left. Uh, yeah, Antoine Kelly was the, the one that I think the Rangers feared losing the most um, <clears throat> just because he has the stuff and, and, and probably will be a, a pretty and good And pitched at double A for pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was helter-skelter there uh, after the, after the, the trade. Um, but anyway, that's it from the farm. Yep, that's it. And guys, listen, we're into the holidays now. It's December. If you want to give a gift to somebody that's really good, a Rangers gift, you need to give them Rangers today. Yeah. It's very easy to gift it for them, put it in their inbox, and then when they open the little present, you just give them a little envelope that says, you're now uh, subscribed to Rangers today, and they can get online. We'll hit their inbox every day. Um, yeah. it'll, be a, it, it'll be a good deal. So get on there and do it. Five ninety nine a month, $60 for the year. $35 for six months. It's a great gift for a Ranger fan out there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. A big thanks again for the guys for coming on here today. And until next time, guys, we'll see you at the yard. Roxo Media House.